This is my 2015 chronologically recorded. 38 times I hung a tree stand to hunt public land, and over the next quick moving moments, I'll do my best to share the adventure. See, Pennsylvania isn't spacious, it isn't vast, but it's home. And every tree I climbed down, every camera I mounted, it lives within a timeline that I truly do cherish. These are reflections I plan to share with the furthest of strangers and the closest of friends as we learn from our mistakes. Do you believe he's letting me on his property after I throw his bow out of the tree? Only then do we begin to grow as individuals. See, we understand that we are hunters. We're nothing special. We're simply referred to as normal. And from every quivered arrow to every slow falling bow, we observe as time drifts away. We watch as other lives move forward, completely unaware of our presence. We listen to our instincts. We wander in the dark. We expect to see the unexpected. We take in the sun as it opens its eyes through the trees. We learn more in one morning than some take a lifetime to experience. We're constantly asking questions and we're always seeking answers. See, I believe that this isn't just my story, it's ours. The lull in October is nothing new. We're 14 days in with barely ghosts running through. Anticipation and excitement, they don't slow down as the calendar presses on. Alarm clocks barely sing before we silence them with a foot halfway out the door. For us, it's a way of life, and the morning color bleeds into the sunsets, and we press on. We realize that we are not the perfect predator. We make mistakes, we make assumptions, and we fail the vast majority of the time. In the modern age, we climb down too soon to meet obligations. We watch perfect opportunities give way to prioritized requirements of living. We take deep breaths, experience the gravity that holds us together, and live in the moment. Each day is another chance to be a part of something completely natural and exclusively human. We get tired. We get worn down we get bored. In reality, what gets us out of bed in the morning may differ, but we can't deny the shared strand of DNA that opens our eyes and puts food on our table. Pages with the header October now face the walls, and the buildup of our hunts grow into a morning that Kevin and I will talk about for an extremely long time. Some of us hunt specific animals, and some of us, like myself, are happy with any animal that God will provide. Kevin chose Niner, and when he showed up, we were completely pinned down. Not every mistake is followed up by failure. We backed out with a plan of giving it at least 10 hours time. And you'll have to ask Kevin how the rest of his day went. Seeing the successes of your closest friend is motivation in and of itself. And as November continues on, the deer continue to move. This is what we prepare for. This is what we train for. This is why we practice. All for that one moment in time. In the first week of November, we had one opportunity and Kevin has horns in his hands. I feel like it's a place we've all been before. We had deer everywhere except within 25 yards. I saw more bucks in the first seven days of November than the entire month of October. We all have a choice to make. We either give in to the temptation of sleeping in 
We're going home early, or we hunt harder, and we hunt longer. Time will keep moving without us, but we aren't people that let it. So I chose to put one foot in front of the other. at 40 yards that I would have had to make that dreaded call to my beautiful wife to let her know that I'd be making another trip to the taxidermist. There were years in my life that I'd be mad at that notion. This is only the second year that I've hunted with traditional archery, and many of us would have regrets in that fact. But my choice to hunt with a recurve bow is one that I take very personally and it's one that I don't look back on negatively. Could I have tagged one of those bucks with a compound bow or a crossbow? Probably. But would I have been in that stand? Would I have hunted as long and hard as I did? And would I have been faithful to get out of bed that morning? Probably not. about 150 yards from where I am right now. 
whip to him though, it looked like something was wrong with his back leg. Cause he kinda, he was kinda, kinda shuffling a little bit. But when he, he got to about 20 yards, I drew, I started to draw. And as I drew, he stopped in his tracks and took one step to his, to his left. So he was facing to the right of me, broadside. And when I got full draw, my head lay was half covered by my bow, so I couldn't really see the coyote, but I just, I knew where he was at, and, and I had, at that spot where I wanted that arrow to go, so I just let it go, and flap, I hear that thing hit that coyote, and it, it dropped and get, started kicking, so I, I knocked another arrow, and, and walked up to it, and it died laying right there. I can't believe it. I've, that's the first coyote that I've killed. And I did it walking in the dark to my trees. With my tree stand on my back. Pretty incredible. And I did it with a recurve bow. I just... <laughs> I'm still trying to... Trying to figure out what actually happened. It's ridiculous. But even on where you don't feel like getting up and you don't feel like going out. The weather might not be perfect, but it's days like that, man. <laughs> just, just ridiculous. <laughs>